Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Tasteless here, and I have got a very exciting game for you guys. This is from the actual StarCraft uh, Remastered ladder. This is Rush here in the bottom right in the red, and up here in the top left is Action. Um, both these guys super high ranked right now, um, and I, you know, it's it, this is one of the cool things. I've been using the um, Seawall.gg website to actually just scoop out. Uh, real pro gamer matches that are happening in ranked settings on Battle.net. And I found this one. I saw these two guys have, have duked it out. I didn't really check to see uh, who won and lost. So I'm going to be going into this one. Super excited to see how this is going to be played out. This is on the map um, Invader. And it, this map was inspired by the game Space Invader. It looks like a big Space Invader. We'll probably see that more uh, when we get a, a bigger part of the map. Uh, and by the way, if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the YouTube, all that YouTube stuff. Uh, I will be making more content like this to try to grow the channel. And I will be casting other new RTS games that are just around the corner on this channel as well. So I hope I am earning your sub. Down here, we've got Rush going for a pretty quick, pretty quick excuse me, Barracks. This has turned out to be, like, really, really trendy. Uh, we had periods for a year or two where this was kind of the de facto build. But... Uh, now it's become pretty pretty popular again, and it really forces a Zerg to actually respect uh, the Terran and to not cut any corners. Don't be confused if you see a build like this and think that this is an all-in. It's really a, a type of a rush that the Zerg has to use a certain number of drones to defend, and if the Zerg was greedy at all, they would be killed. Um, and one of the things about putting it out here like this is you can then lift the barracks up, land it here, and you have a neat little wall in that keeps your Marines safe and allows you to then make a command center from this. Over on this side of the map, um, frankly, this is not a common opener to see in, in ZVT, but I guess with the popularity of a build like this, I, it kind of makes sense. He's going for a really quick... Um, set of Zerglings here and getting gas. Now you could get Zergling speed. You, I guess you could technically get a layer as well. So let's leave both of those ideas open. But um, this is going to make it a lot scarier for the Terran to try to be out on the map with these Marines. And this is a big catch for as, I think as prepped as action was to try to deal with Zerglings early on, he lost his Overlord. So this map has been out for just like, I think two or three weeks as of the recording of this VOD. So uh, it does seem like Rush has been a little bit on top of where the Overlords are likely to scout, and he did run out there and get a kill on that. As we see this map stay in the ecosystem for longer and longer, it's very likely that we will see less and less of that. But that's a pretty good little victory uh, there that obviously curbs any ability to really uh, produce and, and mass up Zerglings. But at the same time, unsurprisingly, Rush doesn't advance any further on the map. He can't know, are there more Zerglings? Are the drones being made? And did Zergling speed get created? In this case, we know Zergling speed was not created. Um, and now, Rush is going to know that there's no Ling speed because he sees slow Lings running away. This may tempt him into pushing back out. Meanwhile, this layer is about to finish, and so we've got two avenues this can take. It can either be Spire or it can be Lurkers. Obviously, Spire is the more common one. Um, but so far, so far, it's been a pretty interesting early game. Again, with the wall in like this, you can kind of see how this complements an expanding uh, Terran so nicely because you get to create the opportunity to attack, but the moment that you see that it, it's probably not going to work out, uh, you can immediately shift gears into a position like this. Um, as far as tech goes, sorry, I think the Twitch chat's covering this up. Um, we've got the Academy coming here. I'm still looking to see if there's going to be an eBay. I've seen variations where you do get a quick eBay with this, but you certainly don't have to. Another poke in. He's trying to count how many Marines are here. Um, and you can count them on the outside. By the way, Rush not really hiding it. Also, just seeing the barracks lit up makes that clear. Remember that there's two exits. There's one here and there's one here. So the Zerg really has to be watching on both sides or the Terran could go right around him. Um, it's going to be a Spire, unsurprisingly. The second gas is finished. Uh, and so we're going to have very quick Mutalisks coming out here. I think at this point in time, it's hard to say that one player is really ahead of the other. Uh, we do have both players getting into a pretty comfortable spot. There's that eBay I was talking about. Stim is on the way. Um, 
and the second barracks is going to come down. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see two more barracks come down to total this out into four and maybe even up to five later on. And the scans, the timing seems safe. I wonder if this was maybe supposed to be a little bit earlier because it seems like the mutas are going to be out and heading towards him. And remember that you, you really need the turrets versus two hatch muta especially kind of done before they get there or the damage just starts to to really pile up. We've got air weapons coming down, so action is very much committed to uh, this next attack that we've got coming in here. The lings are going to come out once more. They're going to take a look and see um, that there is a bunker being made. By the way, the bunker indicates he wasn't sure if this was a lurker bust or not, so um, he is scanning and finding out he's a, a couple seconds off. Now, I think Rush is going to be okay. And let's also point out, you know, just from the Zerg's perspective, it's 18 drones to 27 SCVs. So, I mean, Zerg is eventually going to have to get a third base up and running because um, it's going to be Rush's turn to move out on the map pretty quickly here. Perfect placement on these turrets. Uh, you know, honestly, I, I don't really see a... I mean, do you? Do you guys see a spot you could actually get in and really do damage? I think he's kept the infantry back enough around his pr production facilities that... Action really isn't getting anything done. We're still on two hatches. Uh, what is this down here? Sorry, this is an overlord. I was wondering if this is potentially a drone. Action is finally committed over here uh, onto these SCVs and hammering away at them. And this is going to be the moment that prompts Rush to move out on the map. He has got to have plus one attack just seconds out, right? Oh, wow, it's actually halfway out. And, you know, this is a, a funny game of cat and mouse on the map. The Terran has to be careful to create enough of a threat that the Zerg can't really commit too much damage in here. But at the same time, if the Terran gets too deep in the map, you can get surrounded with mutas and Zerglings. So he's going to come in here. He sees at this point he can almost two-shot turrets. He'll be able to two-shot them once the rest of these mutas come in. And Action's going to try to look for angles where the Marines are lined up and not moving in kind of a wave formation, uh, he, it, which is unfortunately not what happened back there. He lost a lot more mutas than he should. And I got to point out, the SCV count continues to grow, and that's what's scary about this. We're almost up to 40 SCVs, while Rush is... is uh, sorry, while Action is just back here on 17... I still don't see a third hatch. I know this is kind of the nature of the game when you go up into two hatch muta is that when you play like this, it's just very, very difficult to ever get out of it. And I think we're seeing that here. And I'm definitely seeing problems down the road for action. So he comes through. He does a lot of damage to these SCVs. And this is the kind of angle of a fight you want to take. Notice how the Marines are getting pulled around either side of the command center. He's keeping those numbers small. He's going to lift the eBay up. I assume we're going to... Oh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> um, we're going to have to see um, the armor upgrade come. It looks like it started now. And the Zerg's really not back down from the main goal. I mean, this is... Just non-stop mutas the entire time. And the CC being lifted back here, by the way, I just saw someone in the chat mention that. Yeah, that's very intentional is to lift the CC so that you can actually get under it and not have to deal with the headache pathing. So at this point in time, we're still at a pretty insane number of SCVs compared to drones. We don't have the third uh, base up here yet for Zerg. I don't know that we're going to. It does seem like we're in a bit of arrested development on either side, although I guess the Terran has truly continued to tech up and will now get into Valkyries. Valkyries are basically going to be the moment that the Zerg has to figure out like another plan here, whether that's using Scourge to fly into the Valkyries or something else. So, you know, he's fighting back pretty nicely. I mean, let's point out, if he can keep killing Marines over here, he does have that plus one attack. Maybe he could actually end up killing off the Valkyrie as it pops out. He comes in here to regroup. We've got Scourge coming in. 
They're both teching up to the exact thing they want. This, In this case, he wants to just try to kill off the Valkyrie. If you get three or four Valkyries out here, you're a made man. And so the Scourge come in and they take the Valkyrie out. Uh, action is still in this game. Really, really nicely done. And for now, the Zerg can basically dominate on top of this area where the Valkyries are coming out. It makes you wonder what this game would look like if he could just maybe even get the star uh, port over here, but he can't. And another Valkyrie is going to come out. The Marines are going to stim in here. They're not going to last for that long. The Valkyrie gets out. It's undamaged. We see turrets beginning to edge in. And he just does a dive. It doesn't kill it off. That's huge. Is that good? That's going to be it. That's going to be it. Okay, kind of a crazy game back there. Um, Action is in a situation where he just does not have any off-ramp from Mutatech. You, if you do that kind of two-hatch Mutatech like that, uh, and you're, you're getting Mutas out that early, and you don't have a third base, you don't have a lot of drones at your natural, um, it could be pretty powerful, but if you're not able to snowball the game, you're kind of stuck because Rush is playing more of um, like an honest game. He's developing his tech. He's making SCVs the whole time. And the nail in the coffin is keeping a couple of Valkyries alive because then there's no way for the Mutalisks to ever actually engage with your army. And the fact that that last or the second uh, Valkyrie that came out in the game did manage to last through that attack and therefore would be repaired, that was how um, Action knew it was over. Obviously, it was not a game where one player pushed and attacked into the other to get that kill. But that's a win regardless, because Action knows there's no way that the game can go on from there. Uh, thank you so much for watching these little casts I've been doing here on my YouTube. I do hope I've earned your subscription. And uh, please check out my merch site, tastelessthreads.com. We've got a lot of cool RTS-related merch, and I plan on doing a lot of other uh, RTS content, whether that's StarCraft or other future RTS games in the future here on this channel. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you in a future video, I hope. Bye-bye.